we both are familiar with the integral framework. <clears throat> and the the first part of our life you know, with transcendental meditation, which is an Eastern philosophy from India, and that is a tradition of <clears throat> what integral calls waking up. So st state experiences of enlightenment. And as you said, right, it, that is only one of the four main, we'll say, lines of personal development or potentialities of the self. <clears throat> and another one of those is what you brought up was uh, cleaning up. And that's in the shadow work, I understand, and uh, the young yin. <clears throat> And then there's also uh, growing up and showing up. And as I understand it, you <clears throat> don't exclude any of those. Those are all part of what you do for groups and for individuals. Can you say a little bit of how you came to those other three and how they're showing up in what you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for the layman, it's really easy to think of what you're calling the waking up experience as spiritual practice. So people meditate, they cultivate mindfulness, they're more conscious, ideally in daily life, not just while they're sitting in meditation. But that's the rub, isn't it? Is you can be sitting in your favorite Lululemon pants at the top of the mountain with the birds chirping on retreat. And isn't it? amazing to be so conscious <laughs> and be having such a nice experience. And then you go back down from the monastery into the marketplace and you lose a client or you have to deal with your kids being upset or your wife's upset with you or your husband's upset with you and you get emotionally triggered. And the thing about emotional triggers is they don't necessarily show up on the meditation cushion. They show up in relationship. So this is of course the whole realm of psychology versus spirituality and the integral approach if it's anything is very much a psycho spiritual approach to human development if you look at a lot of the data on what actually works in psychology or psychiatry specifically we have a very kind of backwards or broken model where we assess for illness and then we treat things with drugs which really just mask symptoms so we're kind of in the words of pink floyd becoming comfortably numb like that's what we aspire to mm -hmm. is just the mean so it's spirituality is so mm -hmm. important because it does have to do with transformations and consciousness state experiences that if integrated again properly into psychological development can actually facilitate the process of human evolution or growth and so a lot of positive psychology studies you know, the happiest people or high performing people, what is it that they're doing? Well, what, what is their mindset? What are their practices? So psychology has evolved as part of the human potential movement in the it started, uh, you know, out at Esalen actually in the seventies and eighties. So there's ways in which psychology and sp spirituality are, have been integrated, but you see too often people using spirituality to bypass the things that matter most, you know, the human issues, the things that are unhealed, the traumas from the past. And that's really what people end up projecting and living out unconsciously in their life, as we've discussed in other interviews, <laughs> where people get on the wheel of karma and they keep repeating the same patterns. And that's the kind of hell that we live on on Earth, which is really just unconsciousness. So you know, growing up, we had transcendental meditation, which tends to emphasize just transcending. So you just wake up, as you put it, and then you're enlightened and you don't really have to deal with any, nothing bothers you anymore. And, and you never would have had to have gone back into the darkness to confront or feel anything painful or uncomfortable. And of course, that can be profoundly dehumanizing. And I would like to think that there's an important and powerful relationship between the cultivation of presence or mindfulness or spiritual states of consciousness and how it's that presence itself that can hold the space for um, the wounded parts of us 
that are in shadow to heal. That that's the thing ultimately from a spiritual perspective is there's something eternal that starts waking up, that starts healing. And it does, it heals not just incidentally, like what happens to us in life, the ups and downs do seem to cause our pain or pleasure. But then there reaches a point where, what if it isn't just the things that happen to us? Like, what if it's the issue of life and death itself? And do you trust it? And I think that's what puts people off and onto the spiritual path, I would say prematurely, but these big questions um, <clears throat> are around whether we trust in life at all. <laughs> and is there a God? And what is the meaning of all of this? And where are we going? And how did we get here? And you know, what is happening, basically? These are spiritual questions that, again, psychology can bring you up to the mean, even really helpful forms of therapy. But at a certain point, um, spirituality tends to hold the transformational element that I think um, allows us to confront the deeper issues that lead us further on our path of awakening.